Hi everyone. So welcome to the stream today. Very much excited for having you always on the stream for us to continue with our discussion. So we're looking still at the investment appraisal and this is section three. We've looked at the issue in relation to the payback period, the discounted payback period. Then we look at the net present value yesterday and we solved the question on how the net present, net present value could be computed. Now, today we want to look at the internal rate of return as well as the accounting rate of return. That is IRR as well as the ARR. That is what we want to look at real quick today. And then we'll be talking also about sensitivity analysis. So welcome to the stream. If you join the stream, you give us a thumbs up on the video. I see some of you already with a thumbs up. Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. And also do well to comment in the chat box with any questions that you have for me. Giselle, I see you. You said I'm here, sir. All right, Giselle, I hope you're doing well. Charles Zuli, I see you. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the stream. Any questions you have, please put it in the chat box for me. I'll be very much excited to answer all of your questions for you and provide you with some assistance in what you are doing so you can increase your chances of actually passing the examination. And I hope your revision has been going on well so far. So Apia J, Ishira, I'm around. Okay. So up comedy one, it's actually Apia J. Okay, Apia J, I hope you're doing well. So we want to continue with our discussion and uh, look at the issue in relation to the accounting rate of return as well as the net uh, internal rate of return in that case. So yesterday, this was where we ended. We looked at uh, the question and then did our investment schedule. And we realized that the project had a positive NPV of 258,000 Ghana cities. So we're gonna be building up on this question to be able to compute or calculate the internal rate of return in that case. So we're still simply going to be using the same principle or the same question to be able to compute the internal rate of return. Then we will go back and do the accounting rate of return. Then we will look at sensitivity analysis because I think yesterday Samuel Quaysen asked about the sensitivity analysis. So we're going to be looking at that as well today. So any questions, you put it in the chat box for me, and then you give us a thumbs up on the video. If you know there is somebody who has joined the stream, you can share the video with them to invite them to be part of the stream as we together study and prepare for the examination. So if we look at what we have here, usually one thing you must understand is that, or one problem about the MPV is that uh, when we use the MPV to make the decision, the cost of capital is at the best and only estimate. And usually it, ten, it turns out to be a different rate when we are actually making the decision. So the internal rate of return is simply the rate of interest at which the net present value of the project is going to be zero. So because like, for instance, in this question, we use 10%. Okay, so we want to find out, maybe when the project is actually due to be undertaken and the interest rate or the discount factor, sorry, changes, what is gonna be happening? So the discount or the internal rate of return is simply the rate of interest at which the NPV of, of the project is going to be zero. It is also called the break-even rate. So let's go back and then let's begin to write. Patience, I see you. You are welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well and your revision is going on well as well. So internal rate of return, 
Another name that we call it is the break-even rate. So sometimes if the examiner says break-even rate of return is the same as the internal rate. Like I mentioned, this is the rate of, at which the NPV of the project is going to be zero, meaning that we're not going to make profit, we're not going to be making any loss, but at this rate, the, inter the NPV of the project is going to be zero. Now, in order for us to compute the internal rate of return, we need to calculate the NPV at two different rates. And then we will approximate between the two, assuming any linearity in that case. So in a simple language, our formula for the internal rate of return is simply going to be A plus NPVA over MPV A minus MPV B, okay? Into bracket B minus A. All percent in that case, all right? Now, what does this mean? Like you can see here, you realize that we're gonna be doing two different NPVs for the question under discussion, and then we are going to be doing the computation in that case. I see some of you joining. Welcome to the stream. Any questions you have, you put it in the chat box for me. So, Wanami Godwin, I see you. You are welcome to the stream. Thanks for the thumbs up on the video. So if we are going to be calculating the internal rate of return, before I go into the computation, the decision rule here is that if the uh, internal rate of return, so the internal rate of return that we're gonna be computing, if it is greater than the cost of capital of the company, then we accept what? The project. So if it is greater, we accept. But if the internal rate of return is less than the cost of capital, then we reject the project in that case. Khadija Mensa, I see you. You are welcome to the stream. Any questions, put it in the chat box for me and give us a thumbs up on the video page. That way we get more engagement on the video. Thanks for the thumbs up, all of you guys. I really appreciate that. So the decision rule is simple. When the internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital of the company, we accept the project. When it is less than the cost of capital of the company, then we reject the project. So like I mentioned, we're gonna be building up from the question we were solving yesterday. Now the question we were solving yesterday, we realized that we got a positive NPV of, positive NPV of, $258,000, and it was a positive. Now, remember when you are doing the internal rate of return, you are going to be calculating two MPVs. So when you do the first one like this, and it is positive, it simply means that the MPV you used was lower, hence you need to increase the MPV. Are you getting it? It means the MPV you used was low, so you increase it. So in the second MPV schedule you're gonna be using, we're gonna be increasing the rate. Now, this is based on judgment. The first one we did was 10%. So this was at 10% and it gave us the $258,000 positive. So if we are increasing it, we can increase it to 20%. We can increase it to 15%. No matter what, it depends on the judgments that we use for that. So let's use maybe 17% and to calculate the second NPV, building up from what we did yesterday. Now, for those of you who did not watch the video yesterday or who did not 
joined the lecture yesterday. Let me just show you where we ended and you can watch the video later on. This was putting all the pieces together. This was what we had. So we are going to be picking the net cash flows because that is where our focus is so that we will apply the 18 or 17% we want to use on that. So if you check the net cash flows, year zero was negative 200,000, year one was 141, uh, year two was 14, sorry, 414, year two is 410, year three is 417, year four is 470, year five is 1580. So these are the net cash flows we are going to be pick, picking. Then we apply the 17% discount rate so we can get the second NPV. Then we can now compute the internal rate of return. I hope it makes it very, very important in that. Andrew, upon Bear concert, am I late? Oh. Not too late. We are just getting into it. So you are still in the spirit. So let's go. We are now going to be calculating the NPV at a discount rate of 17%. Okay. So let's put a shadow up here. Zero, one, two, three four, and then five. Now, we are picking the net cash flows. And year zero, it's negative 2,000. Year one is 414. Year two is 410. Year three, 417. Year four, four thirty. Year five, one five zero eight. So these are the net cash flows respectively. Remember, I said if you do the first one and the MPV is positive, it means that the rate is very low, hence you increase the rate. But if you do the first one and it is negative, it means the rate is too high. So the next one you reduce the rate. Now I see a statement or comment from Samad that why we take negative figure when we add higher rate MPV with lower rate MPV, why not should be positive when we add two figures together? I don't know what you are talking about Samad Gay. We've not done anything negative MPV with lower rate We've not calculated the IRR yet. I guess what you are asking relates to the IRR, but we've not calculated that yet. Or better still, you can clarify your comments for me because I don't understand it. So at a discount factor of 17%, so we go to the discount table and we read 17%. Now year zero will still be 1.00. Year one, 17% is 0.870. Year two is, no, let me read this well. 17% year one, 0.855. Year two, is 0.855. 718, year three is 0 0.840, year four, what am I reading? <laughs> Sorry, I'm messing you up here. Let's take it again. Year one, 0 0.855, year two, 0 0.7. 31, year 3, 0 0.624, year 4, 0 0.538, and 
and then year five, no point four five six four five eight. Okay, so these are the discount factors. So we're going to be multiplying these respectively. That gives us the present value. Now year one is still going to be next 2000. So let's punch these out. 141 times 0 0.855. And that is 353.97. So to the nearest thousand, so 354, something like that. Then 410 by 0 0.731. That's about 300. Then 417 by 0 0.624, that's 260. Then 430 by 0 0.538, that's 231. And then 1508 times 0 0.458. 17 percent, year three, no point two six, year four, no point. Five three. This is five three four. I don't know why I'm mixing the then zero point five six here. Okay. So four thirty by zero point five three four. Okay, still around two thirty. And then the last one is gonna be 1508 times 0 0.456. And that's 688. So these are the present value respectively. So once we have the present values respectively, let's get the NPV. And so let's see, minus 2000, plus 354, plus 300, plus 260, plus 230, plus 688. And that gives us negative 6 or 168,000. There you go. So, the NPV is now negative 168,000. So what do we have here? You realize that NPV at 10% is 2,58,000, whilst NPV at 17% is negative 168,000. Giselle said, I have a question, sir. Yeah, go ahead, Giselle. You can type in your question and then I'll answer it for you. You can type in your question. So now we have the two NPVs. Now the question is, which one is going to be the A? Which one is going to be the B? Always the highest interest rate, sorry, the highest discount factor is going to be the B, and then the lowest is going to be A. Hence, that is the idea. So NPV A is going to be the lower NPV or the positive NPV, and then NPV B will be the 
higher discount factor in that case. So 168 will be NPVB, whilst 256 will be NPVA. Giselle, you can ask your question before I proceed. Can we go? Everybody good? So we'll be substituting this into our formula to be able to get our answer in that case. Patient said, please come again as to which should be A or B. Okay, the A is the lowest discount factor and then B is the highest discount factor. Okay, A is the lowest discount factor and then B is the highest discount factor or the higher discount factor, since we are dealing with only two things. I hope you're okay, patience. Let me know in the chat box. And then Giselle, if you are still online, whatever question you said you have, you can ask. Okay, so patience is okay. So let's put it down. So, if we are now calculating the internal rate of return, remember our formula A plus NPVA over NPVA minus NPVB, B minus A. So this is our formula. So we're gonna be substituting the things into it. So the B is going to be 17, the A will be 10 and then we substitute everything into it. So let's go. So it's going to be 10% plus 256 dollars over we're working in dollars, so no B. Two, it's not 256, it's 258. Over 258. Now, you gotta be careful here, 258 minus, minus 168. So you could make it plus, because remember the MPVB, we had minus 168. So you could make it plus there, but I'm not going to put a plus there. I'm just writing it up straight up, so you understand. Then the B is 17 minus the A, is 10. So we punch this out and we should get our answer in percentages. So 10 plus 258 over To bracket 17 minus 10. 
I'm getting 14.2%. Can you confirm? As my internal rate of return. So if you check here, the cost of capital of the company is in the question, we're given that the cost of capital is 10%, but our IRR as computed here is 14.2%. So since the internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital, we will say that the project should be what? Accept, so, or accepted. So we accept the project. So that is the treatment for the internal rate of return. Okay. So Khadija Mensa said confirmed. Okay, that's right. So this is how you deal with internal rate of return. Very simple, sweet, straight to the point. So you do the first one. If you get a net positive answer, it means that this count rate is lower. So the next one, you increase it. But if you do the first one and you get a negative answer, it means that this count rate is too high. So the next one, you lower the discount rate. Now, the, the gap or the discount rate to be used will be based on your judgment. In this case, I use 17%. Someone could use 15%. Someone could use 20%. All we will know is that, or all we have to know is that it needs to be greater than the 10 we used earlier to be able to make or reach our analysis in that case. So this is what you must understand about IRR, or if you want, internal rate of return. Remember I said another name we can call it is the break-even cost of capital or the break-even cost. So it means that it, assuming in the future we are ready to really buy this asset and our cost of capital go to 14.2%, it means the NPV of the project will actually be zero. But if it, we want to now invest in the project and we go and our cost of capital is anything slightly above the 10%, but still below the 14.2%, it means it will still maximize the wealth of the shareholders or increase the wealth of the shareholders. So that is what you have to understand about the internal rate of return. Any questions, everybody good? Now, since I am here in the NPV spirit, before I go to the accounting rate of return, let me discuss sensitivity analysis with you. Then when we finish with sensitivity analysis, we will go back to work on the accounting rate of return because I'm in the spirit of literally NPV here. Let me touch on it here so that we build up the understanding together in that case. Now, what is sensitivity analysis? You see, the projects that we have, okay, Khadija Mensa said, said, what do you do when the IRR is equal to the cost of capital? Yeah, if it is equal to the cost of capital, then it means that a further investigation would have to be undertaken, okay? So a further investigation would have to be undertaken. And that is where there is another method for the modified internal rate of return. And that could be used in order to arrive at a rate to be able to make our decision there. But if your uh, internal rate of return 
is the same as the cost of capital, then we need a further investigation to be able to reach conclusion whether we should go for this project or not. Now, usually, the reason why when the internal rate of return is higher, we accept the project is that there is an assumption that we use to calculate the internal rate of return. And that assumption is that the cash inflows on this project will be reinvested at the internal rate of return. That is a concept. I get it, it's, the, it's an assumption. So we assume that the cash inflows coming in from this project will be invested at, or will be reinvested at 14.2%. So that is the assumption we use to build up in that case. So let's go to sensitivity analysis. Like I am here in the spirit, so let's not kill it. And then let's look at sensitivity. Khadija, I hope you are okay. Giselle, you said you had a question or you are off. Okay, let's go. So sensitivity, let's spell that well. Sensitivity analysis. Like I mentioned, the NPV that we have computed, that a project is having a positive NPV, hence we should proceed with the project, is based on or was based on a couple of estimations we made. We assume that a selling price of this unit of output is this, the cost of capital is this, the initial cost is this, the operation cost is this, the project life is this. That was the assumption we used in calculating the MPV. But the question is, what if those things change? What if the estimates we made to calculate the MPV changes? Like what would be the effect of that on the MPV? For instance, if we say the selling price should be $20 per unit in the first year, what if, if we actually start selling, we cannot sell at 20% and we need to sell at $18 per unit? What will happen? The cost, the material cost we had, what if we were saying it should be $8 in current terms and we added inflation? What if we started and the inflation or the prices of things have gone up like in this period of the COVID-19, what do we do about it? Okay, what do we do? How do we deal with that? That kind of uh, risk in the assumptions that we are making is where sensitivity analysis comes in. So the sensitivity analysis looks at the changes that will happen on an MPV should there be a change in the variables that were used in the computation of the MPV, okay? So what will happen to the MPV? Will the MPV go up or the MPV come down if the selling price changes, if the sales volume changes, if the cost of capital changes, if the initial cost changes, what will be the effect of that on the MPV? That is what sensitivity analysis is about. I see a comment from a PAJ. In exam situation, what should one do when after choosing the second discount rate, the MPV is still positive? You still go ahead and solve it, a PAJ. You, you, you just go ahead and solve it. Only that here you realize that one has a bigger MPV. The second one, even though it's not negative, the MPV will be lower than the first one. So you still go ahead and solve it in that case. You don't have to redo it. It happens. So you just go ahead and solve it. At the end of the day, we want to just have one to be high, one to be low, and we will, or we will be okay to go. Mm. 
Josephine, Anand said, Sir, please, can you give me the link? Which link are you talking about? Patience said, Sir, please go over the sensitivity analysis bit. Okay. I'm saying that when we were doing our MPV, like for instance, the question we were looking at, we realized that the MPV of the project was positive 258,000. So we said, it is good, let's continue with the project. Are you getting it? But the question is, what will happen to this NPV? Assuming when we actually start producing and start selling, the selling price changes. The sales volume changes. When we're going to borrow the money, the cost of capital changes from the one we use to appraise the project. If those things happen, what will be the impact of the, or on the NPV of the project? That is what sensitivity analysis is about. So we are analyzing the risk that is surrounding the project to assess the response or the effects of those risks on the NPV of the project. Does it make sense, patience? So let's go. Now, traditionally, when we are calculating the sensitivity analysis, or when we are doing the sensitivity of cash flows, it's simply going to be the NPV that we had divided by present value of project variable. Let me bring this below here. So sensitivity to the cash flows is going to be the NPV you had divided by present value of project variable. Times 100. So this is how we calculate the sensitivity of cash flow. Abi Odan, good evening. I hope you're doing well. Patient said, not really. Perhaps some workings, workings will do. Thanks, sir. Yes, we are about to solve a question on this. And then when we solve the question and I explain it, possibly you will get an understanding there. So this is the formula we're going to be using to deal with the sensitivity on it. Now, note that when we talk about project variables, we mean the things we use in the computation of the NPV, like our selling price, okay? Like our sales volume, that's a variable, like the initial cost, like the operating cost, like the cost of capital. The question we are asking ourselves is, what will happen to the NPV we have computed should any of these variables which we use in the computation change? If they change, what will be the impact on the NPV? That is what the, sens the sensitivity analysis is about. So, Let's look at a question on how this can be computed. And sometimes the variable can also be project life. And I'll be going through all of these for you. So let's look at that. So it's a very simple question and you can just take a screenshot of it. So 
So a three-year project has the following cash flows and calculated NPV. So we see the initial investment that is 100,000 pounds. The discount rate is at 10%. And we see this is annuity. So from year one to year three, we see the sales revenue to be 40,000 pounds. And then the annuity factor at 10%, 2.87. So when you multiply, you get a 9948. Then you see there is a scrap value there. Scrap value is revenue. And revenue or sales is also a receipt. So the scrap value at the end of the third year of this project is 10,000 pounds. And the discount factor there is going to be 0.751. And when we discount that, we get 7.51. So we realize that the NPV of the project is positive 6.99. The question we want to ask ourselves here is required. Calculate the sensitivity for each of the variables. Calculate the sensitivity for each of the variables. So how do we deal with that? Simple. All we are asking is this, for instance, the initial investment we are saying is 100,000 pounds. What happened if, when we, we are ready to undertake the project, the initial investment now increases to 150,000 pounds or 120,000 pounds? What will happen to the NPV? That is what the sensitivity analysis is about. How about this revenue that we are, we are saying every year we will have 40,000 pounds? What if we start selling and we are not getting 40,000 pounds and we are having, having let's say, 30,000 pounds? What will be the effect on the NPV? That is sensitivity analysis. What if this scrap value at the end of the life of the project, we thought it would be 10,000 pounds, but before we knew it was, it is rather maybe 5,000 pounds. What will be the impact of that on the NPV of the project. What if the discount factor we used is 10%, but we realize that we cannot use 10% at the end of the day when we actually go for the finance for the project and it is 11%, it is 12%. What will be the impact of that on the NPV? These are the questions we are trying to ask when we talk about sensitivity analysis. So let's see how we can calculate the sensitivity analysis and then interpret it as well for us. So let's look at this. Any questions you put it in the chat box for me. Remember we said, Barbara Yanni, hi, good evening. Hey, Barbara, it's been a long time since I heard from you. I hope you're doing well, good evening. So we said, sensitivity of the cash flows should be equal to the NPV of the project divided by present value of project variable times 100, okay, times 100. So this is our formula, the NPV of the project divided by present value of project variable. So having had this in mind, let's look at how we do the sensitivity for the various variables. So let's look at the first one, and that is going to be sensitivity
That's going to be sensitivity to the initial investment. So if we are dealing with the sensitivity of the project to the initial investment, remember our NPV is 6.99. We divide that by the initial cost, that is the present value of the initial cost, and that is 100 and times 100%. So that is going to give us approximately 7%. Now, what does that mean? This is where the interpretation is. This means that if the initial investment increases or increase by 7%, the project will have a nil NPV. That is the interpretation of what we have computed. So if the initial project, or sorry, initial invest, investment increase by 7%, the project will have a zero NPV. In other words, we will be breaking even as a company in that case. That is what we mean by sensitivity to the initial investment. So contextualizing that, our, we are expecting that the initial investment should be $100 or 100,000. If it increased by 7%, so that is if we actually pay 107, that means that this project will have a zero NPV or we will be having a break even there. We won't make any positive uh, or profit. We would ought, we will not also make losses as an organization. So that is the first thing, sensitivity to the initial investment. Now the principle for the interpretation is that when you are dealing with the cost items, whatever you calculate, the percentage increase will cause the projects to have a positive, sorry, will have a zero NPV. Whilst if we are dealing with the revenue items, a percentage uh, decrease of that will cause the projects to have a zero NPV. So let's build it up. If you don't understand, you ask questions, right? Next one. Let's look at sensitivity to the revenue. So sensitivity to the revenue. So if we are looking at the sensitivity of the projects to the revenue, remember our NPV is still 6.99. That's not going to change. Divided by the present value of the revenue, and that is 99.48 times 100%. So let's see what we have there. 6.99 divided by 99.48. That's going to be times 100. That is about 7% as well here. 7%. What does this mean? This means that if the revenue fall, okay, if revenue fall by 7%, the project will have a nil NPV. Okay, with the cost item, we say when it increases by 7%, the project will have a nil NPV. With revenue items, when it increased by 7%, sorry, when it fall by 7%, the project will have a zero NPV. So that is also the sensitivity for the revenue. I hope everybody is okay. Let's move on to the third item, and that's gonna be the scrap value. So sensitivity, I'm not gonna clean much. So one, two, three, and we are dealing with the scrap value. 
SV. In the question, the square value, the present value of the square value was 7.51. So when we do the arithmetic, 6.99 over 7.51 times 100, that's giving us 93.1%. Now remember, the square value is a revenue item. What it means is that the square value has to fall by 93.1% before the project can have a nil NPV. Okay? The square value has to fall by 93.1% before the project will have a nil present or net present value in that case. So that is how we deal with sensitivity analysis as well on the square value. So we've dealt with the initial cost. We've looked at the revenue. We've looked at the square value. Let's look at some other items as well here. The next one is to look at the sensitivity to the cost of capital. Ivan. So sensitivity to cost of capital. Now I want you to follow me carefully here. To calculate the sensitivity of the project to the cost of capital, we have to calculate the internal rate of return. Why? Because the sensitivity of the project to the cost of capital is equal to the internal rate of return minus the cost of capital of the company divided by the cost of capital multiplied by the internal rate of return. So that is what we mean by how we calculate the sensitivity to the cost of capital. Josephine Anand said, sir, can you please explain this topic again? When you say this topic, what do you mean? Are you saying the sensitivity analysis or what topic to be specific? Or oh, some of the computations that you don't understand, please clarify so I can answer you better. So if we are calculating the sensitivity to the cost of capital, like I said, we need to calculate first the internal rate of return. Now, if we look at the question we have here, we have NPV at 10% and that was 6.99 positive. And I told you that anytime we have a first NPV and it is positive, it means the discount factor is too low. So we increase it, okay? We increase it. So if we are increasing it, we can increase it to say 15% so that we can calculate the NPV in that case. So you are saying sensitivity analysis. We said the sensitivity analysis has to do with the risk surrounding the project. That is what will happen to our NPV. That is the net present value should the variables used to compute it change? If any of the items change, if the cost of capital, if the initial cost of capital change, if the initial investment changes, if the square value changes, if the revenue we thought we would be having changes, what will be the effect of that on the net present value of the project? That is what sensitivity analysis is about. So we need to calculate another NPV, and this time around, let's use 15%. So let's look at that. 
So NPV at 15% will be equal to, remember the initial cost does not have any issue. So that's still gonna be minus 100. Then the revenue 40, if you read the annuity factor of the revenue, that is 2.283 at 15%. Then the square value is 10. If we read the present value of the 10, that is going to be 0.658. So you punch it out and that gives us a negative of 2.1. Zero. So you can confirm this as well. Just mean Anand, I hope you understand the explanation. So now we have the initial MPV and we have the final MPV. So as always, the higher MPV becomes the B, whilst the lower MPV becomes the A. So let's substitute it into the IRR formula. So our IRR will be equal to the A, which is the lower cost of capital or the discount factor, that's 10%, plus NPVA 6.99 over NPVA 6.99 minus, minus 2.1 into bracket, 15% minus 10%. So when we work it out, the IRR will be somewhere around 13% or 13.8%. So you can confirm that as well. So now we have the IRR. We have the IRR. So how do we calculate the sensitivity of the project to the cost of capital? How do we calculate that? Simple. So sensitivity to the cost of capital will be our IRR, which is 13.8 minus the cost of capital divided by the cost of capital times 100. And that gives us, let's see, more or less like 13.8 over 10 by 100. Not 13, 3.8 over 100, no, over 10 times 100. That's 38%. That's 38%. So that is how we calculate the sensitivity to the cost of capital. What does that mean? In a simple language, this simply means that the cost of capital has to increase by 38% in order for us to have the NPV of the project to be nil or to be zero, okay? So that is also how we deal with sensitivity to the cost of capital. So anytime you are dealing with sensitivity to the cost of capital, you first have to calculate the internal rate of return because sensitivity to cost of capital is the internal rate of return minus the cost of capital divided by the cost of capital times 100. Then let's look at the last one, sensitivity to the project life. So in this project, for instance, we were saying that the project life is three years. What happens if the project goes beyond three years? What happens if the project life changes? Will we still have a positive NPV or the NPV will become zero? So let's look at how we compute the sensitivity to the 
project life. Any questions, you put it in the chat box for me. Now, to calculate the sensitivity to project life, you need to calculate the discounted payback period. Why? Because sensitivity to project life equals the project life the project life minus the payback period, discounted payback period to be specific, divided by the project life. Certainly times 100. Okay, so patient said, please explain the 38 Button again. What's the implication? Yeah, the implication is that the cost of capital has to increase by 38% in order to bring the NPV of the project to zero or nil. It means currently we are using 10%. If it's increased by 38%, it will bring the project, sorry, the project to zero or the NPV of the project is zero. So if now it is 10%, if 38% of that is going to be 13.8. So if we go and borrow the money or we are raising funding and now the cost of capital is 13.8%, then the project will have a zero NPV. I hope you get an explanation on that. So sensitivity to the project life is the project life minus the payback period, discounted payback to be specific, divided by the project life times 100. Okay. So it means for us to calculate the sensitivity to the project life, we need to calculate the discounted payback period to be able to come to the conclusion on that. So let's calculate the discounted payback period Patient said, very well understood there, sir. Many thanks, you're welcome. So let's look at the discounted payback. You know how it goes, we've done this already. So here, cash flow. Discount factor, remember it's at 10%. Present value. And then cumulative present value. So we start with the year zero, we bring the cost, 100. Discount factor will be the same thing. Present value will be the same 100. Cumulatively, it will be the same 100. Then in year one, you know the annuity was 40,000 every year. So year one, we are having 40. Now discount factor at 10% first year is 0 0.909. So that's gonna be 36.4. Cumulatively, it will reduce it to 63.6. We come to year two, still 40. Discount factor is 0.826. We get a present value of 33, approximately. It will reduce it to 30.6. Remember, it's still negative, all right? Then we come to the third year. Now, remember the project life is also three. So we come to the third year, still 40. This count factor is 0.9.
Now, maybe in the third year, we can do, uh, among other things, two things. In the third year, the cash flow will come, but there's also a square value. So we can add the two up. The square value was 10. So we can add it up to make it 50. And that will be 0 0.751 so that we punch it together. And that's 37.6. And now you see that we are going to a positive of seven. Meaning our payback period is between year two and year three. So let's work that out. Discounted payback will be two years plus cash flow before we went to positive. That's 30.6. Over the cash flow that came in, that was 37.6 multiplied by one year. So if we punch that out, two years plus 30.6 over 37.6, that's going to be 2.81 years. Two point eight one years. So that is our discounted payback period. Discounted payback period. So that is more or less like zero point eight one times twelve. So that is more or less like two years, ten months. Two years, ten months, or two point eight one years. So that's the discounted payback period. Okay. So let's now calculate the sensitivity to the project life. So sensitivity to the project life. will be equal to the project life, which is three years, minus the Discounted payback, 2.81 over 3 times 100. So let's see. So 3 minus 2.81 over 3 times 100. And that would be 6.33%. Now, this means that the project life, if it is less than three years, if it is 6.33% less than three years, it will cause the project to have a nil NPV or a zero NPV. So if the project life is 6.33 less than the three years, then the project will have a nil NPV. So this is how you deal with sensitivity analysis. Augustine Boatin, hello. I hope you're doing well. So this is what you have to understand about sensitivity analysis. Any questions for me? Okay, so this is what you need to understand when it comes to dealing with sensitivity analysis. Very simple, sweet, straight to the point. The most important thing is your ability to interpret. And like I mentioned, 
If it is a revenue item, then whatever thing you calculate, a fall by the percentage of what you calculate will cause the projects to go to a nil or zero MPV. But if it is a cost item, it means that whatever percentage you had, the cost must increase by that percentage to make the NPV of the project to go to zero in that case. Then exceptionally, when you're dealing with the sensitivity to the cost of capital, you have to calculate the internal rate of return because the internal rate of return is, or the sensitivity to the cost of capital is the internal rate of return minus the cost of capital divided by the cost of capital times the internal rate of return. And the decision rule there is that the cost of capital will have to increase by the sensitivity figure you had to cause the NPV of the project to go to zero or to go to nil. And then the last one is that when the project life, that is the sensitivity of project life, whatever figure you get, the project life must fall by that percentage in order to make the project or the NPV of the project to be nil or to be zero. So that is what you have to understand when we talk about sensitivity analysis. So any questions for me? Okay, so this is what you need to understand about uh, this. Now, even though I mentioned that I will be touching on the accounting rate of return, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to touch on that because of time constraints. I would have to conclude here today. You know, our executive revision masterclass is ongoing and uh, I have a session uh, any moment from now with our students on Zoom in that case. So I will conclude here today and uh, God willing tomorrow, we're gonna be continuing. Any questions you have, you join on the stream and then you can ask. So thank you very much for joining the stream today. Giselle, Charles, APJ, Patience, Wanami, Adija, Andrea Pompeco, um, Josephine, Abi Odan, Barbara, and then Augustine, thank you very much for joining the stream all the time. And uh, I don't take it lightly for you to join me on the stream. Continue to follow me on Instagram if you are not, you are not following, as well as on my Facebook page because meeting details will be posted. I will be hosting some private Zoom sessions as well, free uh, to talk about some specific issues as well there. So if it is something you are interested in, you will be able to get the notification if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Patience said, thanks for your time. God richly bless you, amen. Augustine A. Barton said, is this sensitivity analysis applicable in real estate businesses? Yes, sensitivity analysis is applicable in all industries, only that it has some limitations because it is an assumption we are making. It has some limitations in relation to the fact that um, the probability, we are, we are just doing an estimate. Like for instance, we say 13%. What if it goes more than 13%? Okay, so it's just a probability we are doing. And then what we are computing may actually never occur. Maybe there will not be any change and so 
there is no need for us to do the sensitivity analysis and it ignores any risks and has no indication of spread outcome. Maybe we are just having one outcome, but what if we have more than one outcome, more than one possible outcome? That is also not considered in that case. But the issue of we not having that more than one outcome is solved by, is solved by another method called the Monte Carlo simulation, and that is in advanced financial management, and I will not be talking about it today here. So that is it about that, Augustine. Thank you very much for joining the stream, and I'll see you same time tomorrow. Continue to study, continue to work hard. We are just at the end of the session or at the end of the period where you are preparing to write the exams. So make sure you work hard, continue to do what there is that to be done in order for you to prepare for your examination. So see you same time tomorrow and continue to support us. Stay blessed.